Hello everyone and welcome to the open day for the MA MSc Computing and Creative Industry Modular Provision at CCI. My name is Georgina Caldevila and I am the Creative Learning Producer at CCI. And today we are here to share all about this new provision that we have at CCI, the Computing and Creative Industry Modular Provision. And in order to do that, we've got with us Hanta, who is the course coordinator of the program, and two current students at the course, Yifan and Jasper. To give you an overview of how the session is structured first, we're going to start talking about CCI, the spaces, facilities, and resources which are available to students. Then we're going to share an overview of the social mission and public program of the Institute. And lastly, Hunter will talk us through the approach and content that the modular course entails. Right after that, I'm going to invite the two current students, Yifan and Jasper, to join us live so we can jump straight into the Q&A section. We, we will try and go through all the questions we received from all of you. Throughout the, throughout the session as well, we're also going to keep an eye on the chat and we'll do our best to answer to all the queries that we receive from the chat. So we would encourage you to also engage with us in the YouTube chat and just let us know if there's anything, any question, any comment, any doubt that you would have and that we, we could cover today. Also, just we would ask you to be patient as well because there's a lot to go through. So we'll do our best to, go, to cover it all. But if there's anything that we don't have the time to cover, there's always the CCI inbox open for, for any queries. And we'll make sure that we sort out all the questions through email as well. Also, just an important note on accessibility. If, if you have difficulties following along the session, please know that the entire session will be recorded and re-uploaded to our YouTube channel with English closed captions. So please don't worry if you miss any detail because you'll have the opportunity to catch up at your own pace too. So let's get it started. Uh, and we'll begin by watching this lovely video that my colleague Chloe Dan recorded, which will tell you all you need to know about the CCI. Thanks everyone for watching and for joining us today. We'll see you after the video. Thank you. Hi, everyone. In this video, we're going to show you around the campus and share some of the facilities and resources available to CCI students. The Creative Computing Institute is located at UAL's Peckham Road campus in Camberwell, South East London. From 2022, we'll have two new sites open in the Camberwell Peckham area. The Greencoat building opening in January will be used for teaching, technical and office spaces. Eagle Wharf will open in September and will provide a new halls of residence building for UAL students alongside a community outreach, events and exhibition space. Camberwell is a lively and unique area of South East London with good transport links to all parts of the city, including Brixton and Dalston. And we have three halls of residence that are all within walking distance of the CCI. The local area is home to a thriving art scene, which hosts a variety of art galleries and artist studios that students, graduates and staff work and exhibit in. On site, we have two galleries, Camberwell Space and the Students' Union Gallery, with the South London Gallery right next door. Arts organisation Bull Tendencies runs an annual programme of live events and commissions, as well as hosting Frank's Bar on the Roof, with some of the best London views in the city. So here I've just named a few, but there are so many more galleries, cultural hubs and recreational spaces for you to explore that are right on our doorstep. To find out more about the local area, visit the Living in London page on the UAL website. On campus, we have many facilities and spaces for you to use. Our canteen has lots of food and drink options for everyone, with bike storage situated just outside. We have an art shop that offers affordable art supplies and whose staff can help advise you on the best materials for your projects. Also on site, we have an amazing library supported by a dedicated CCI librarian who oversees the subject area of creative computing. She ensures the library stays up to date with the books, periodicals, databases and other resources you need to complete your studies. The Learning Zone is part of the library and is situated on site in the Gardens Halls of Residence building. It's open 24 hours a day, meaning that you can study at a time that best suits you. And they have a range of equipment for you to use and laptops available to learn. To find out more about the spaces and facilities available to you, 
please visit wiki.cci.arts.ac.uk. Now let's take a look around. The CCI is located across the fourth and fifth floors in Block B at Peckham Road and is very accessible to students with various needs. Our lecture theatre is in the basement of Block B. This space is used for lectures as well as events. The fourth floor is used mostly for postgraduate teaching. Here we have a new seminar room and a room which will house our laser cutter and some 3D printers too. The fifth floor is the heart of CCI. Our kitchen is a communal space as well as a learning space. At lunchtime, it becomes a social hub for CCI folks to share lunch together. And during classes, it's a quiet working space. We have pods which can be used when they are not booked as quiet spaces to work and a space to have your tutorials. Alongside are three classrooms two seminar rooms and one high-end computer suite fitted with some of the latest technology, including 24 high-spec computers with NVIDIA RTX 2080 graphics cards and 4K monitors for working on projects ranging from machine learning to 3D rendering and video editing. Additionally, many of these computers can be accessed remotely from home after hours to enable access to specialist software or the high performance for rendering or machine learning work. We also operate a laptop locker system where students can borrow a laptop to use within the CCI spaces. The physical computing lab is a space for students to do all of their electronics. Here we have everything students will need for soldering and testing things out. We have hundreds of different components which are available for you to use. There is also a sewing machine, embroidery machine, computerised knitting machine and 3D printers. This is just a glimpse of some of the amazing facilities and resources you'll have access to while studying at CCI. Hello again, I hope that was useful and got you excited about joining us at CCI. Now, a lot of students are also interested in finding out about the opportunities, workshops and events that they would have the chance to join when studying at CCI. Therefore, the next video I'm going to play will give you an overview about what our public program is, the research themes that we focus on, and the social mission that is embedded in everything that we do. So I hope you enjoyed this one as well, and we'll see you after the video. Hello, everyone. My name is Georgina Capdevilacano, and I am the creative learning producer at CCI. And my role focuses on planning and delivering CCI's public program, which I will briefly talk about in the next few minutes. Our public program is a platform that offers accessible learning experiences, workshops, and events to literally anyone interested in getting a taste about creative competing or deepen their knowledge in the field. This program of activities is underpinned by CCI's three key research themes, which are creativity, machine learning, and AI, human-computer interaction and platforms, big data, and digital citizenship. The public program also responds to CCI's social mission aimed at integrating computational thinking with approaches to fairness and equality for the UL community and beyond. Therefore, all our programs have a strong focus on diversity in technology, digital inclusion and digital entrepreneurship. We are committed to connecting students, practitioners and researchers with an international community of artists and technologists and where everyone can explore creative technology through fun and friendly and most of all accessible spaces. To give you a sense of what you have the chance to take part in while you're studying at CCI, I will just share quickly some of the programs that we've run in the past. At Technology and Powers Intensive Workshop and Public Symposium last year, we learned about human rights, internet technology regulations, and alternative techno futures with Dr. Bixcraft and an amazing group of researchers, artists, activists, and advocates. At Tech for All Conference, CCI staff members shared how we can creatively reimagine the way we use and design new technologies to create platforms interactions, experiences, spaces, and products that bring people together in community, respect, beauty, and solidarity. 
At Query in Voice AI Intensive Course, a mix of UAL students explored how voice interfaces could be designed to support the embodied well-being of trans and non-binary people. And finally, they prototyped SIP, a voice interface that connects trans and non-binary users to media created by their community. And last but not least, at TechYard, we keep creating a safe space for young kids in the local area of Peckham and Camberwell to learn about creative computing with Jasmine Morris and many other CCI staff and students. These are just a few of the activities that we've been running over the last few years, but there's a lot of free, accessible, and interesting content in our YouTube channel, which I would love to invite you to check out at some point. For this next academic year, just so you have a taste as well of what's going on, we're working on a lot of different activities, which will include a couple of intensive workshops that will be open to all UAL and CCI students. We will also run a fellowship program on the field of experimental human-computer interaction. And there are many, many things that are on the way that we can't wait to share with you. As a CCI student, know that you will have the opportunity to be part of all these spaces and to meet other peers from across UAL and beyond. But this will be a safe space for you to explore your creative career, your creative practice alongside students coming from different courses, different levels and different programs that will for sure nurture your own views, your own perspectives and your own skill set. So I hope that this got you excited about joining CCI and we can't wait to share spaces with you in the future. Thanks a lot for your time. Goodbye for now. Hello again. Amazing. So now it's time for us to start talking about the MA slash MSc Computing and Creative Industry Modular Provision, which is the reason why we're all here. So it's a huge pleasure to invite into this stream the course coordinator, Hunter. Let me add you onto this stream. Hello, Hunter. Hello. Lovely to oh have God. you here today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I love these videos. I can watch them over and over again. Chloe did such a fantastic job. Um, yes, hello everybody. I'd like to introduce myself first. Uh, I'm Hunter, I use he, they pronouns, and I am the course organizer um, of the MIMSC Computing and Creative Industry. Um, can we dig up the power? Ah, awesome, right. Um, okay, uh, maybe a little bit about my background. Um, I uh, have a background in marine biology and oceanography way back then in a previous life. Um, I transitioned to um, looking at environmental management and public understanding of science, which included training in anthropo anthropology and looking at bioscientific relationships between indigenous communities um, and environmental management. And with that, I immediately went uh, into indigenous philosophy and indigenous epistemology. And that must, of course, come with a keen agenda to decolonize. Uh, and all of this really eclectic background led me into my PhD in digital innovation, where I just keep on exploring these conflicts of knowledge systems uh, in all kinds of iterations. Um, when it comes to my research, yeah, I have a background in natural science and climate change um, is really driving a lot of my work. Um, anthropology and history again inform my practice and the methods I use are ethnographic, but also using poetry as a form of art and the body as a site to use to achieve um, racial justice and to decolonize um, the literatures I draw on there and again are informed by disability studies, um, indigenous epistemology, and um, neurodivergence and how to in create com inclusive knowledge spaces. Um, and I think art and design pedagogy have so much to offer to the sciences and to policy making, uh, which is why, you know, working in an art school is extremely exciting for me because it opens up a whole new range of ways to um, look at computing and um, in an emancipatory way. Um, so yeah, a lot of my work these days focuses on performance and indigenous decolonized ways of being um, and using the digital as a decolonizing space. Um, I just want to share one example with you um, in response to a four month fieldwork project with indigenous communities in the Arctic. Um, I wrote the conventional reports and stuff, but the thing I'm most proud of and I think the most 
transformative thing for me was an art project where I made a shape-shifting dress that uses data from uh, renewable energies and resource exploitation and land loss um, and how it affects indigenous communities there in the backdrop of centuries of uh, exploitation and um, oppression. Um, so you can see how this background feeds into my practice and into my work. Uh, and uses creative computing as a medium to explore, express, and understand these interrelation. So uh, <laughs> that leads me straight into uh, a really, really basic question. What is creative computing? Um, at its uh, very core, uh, creative computing recognizes that technologies take place at the intersection of human relations. What does that mean? Um, in a traditional computing program, you might look at technology in a very isolated way, whilst really the creative computing approach is to see technology as part of the human uh, ecosystem that uh, in which we are embedded and that is embedded in how we interact with each other. Uh, we are very aware that technology profoundly embeds and affects power dynamics. Um, who gets to have access to technology, who gets to use it easily, who is it made for, and who finds its access, its usability more difficult. Um, profoundly uh, is important about how we should think about technologies and doing it in isolation um, doesn't acknowledge these complexities. Um, technologies are not neutral, they are culturally embedded, they have a history, they come from a very specific place, and this type of, these assumptions about what it means to be human and how we live, travel along with technologies, and as they spread um, throughout the world, um, again, these conflicts can emerge, and uh, politics here doesn't mean party politics, but um, social impacts of technologies that are quite hidden and hard to put your hand on, I think art especially and the methods of art and design can help us to articulate these really subtle but important um, relationships. Um, technologies privilege certain ways of living. Uh, technologies are often privately owned. You require a high amount of literacy to dissect them. Um, if you can dissect them at all, they are often what we call black boxed. And um, it's a fact that, you know, with innovation, we create new, new technologies con continuously uh, without actually anticipating or knowing how they will impact us. Um, and it raises the fundamental question, are traditional computer scientists equipped to deal with these responsibilities? I mean, doing looking at technology in this holistic way is, of course, really, really complicated and hard and slow. And making functioning technology is very, very difficult. So trying to do both things well is an enormous task, um, which then um, yeah, informs the overall research agenda of creative computing approaches where we are aware of these power structures and they just don't uh, not only affect humans, but also the overall planet. Um, climate change being, of course, the um, center issue of, of our century, but also species, pollution, etc. come in, you know, obsolescence and recycling, um, rare minerals and uh, rare earth conflicts, all of that are embedded in how we design technologies. Um, leading to questions of what is meaningful innovation and meaningful for whom? Uh, what is good innovation? Um, and we are informed very often by principles of slow design and uh, sustainable innovation, but again, asking sustainable in what way and for whom? And again, art and design offer us some really creative and new ways to try and explore these and find solution. Um, so there's an overall profoundly feminist and decolonizing agenda in how we approach computing uh, in the creative computing um, domain. And we don't think about technologies as isolated, but we recognize that they are socio-technologies. They play part in human-to-human uh, -human relationships, and human-to-human -human relationships really inform how technologies are used. And that really is at the heart of CCI, um, which then, yeah, <laughs> leads me into the question, you know, very basic. What is CCI? What is the CCI? Um, CCI stands for, <coughs> hmm, 
I'm sorry. Um, CCI stands for the Creative Computing Institute. Um, we are um, an institute within the University of the Arts London with a very strong research portfolio. Um, we are firmly feminist and political. Again, political not being party political, but it means that our research actively feeds back into business, into knowledge exchange, into the local community, such as Tech Yard, where we work to educate um, uh, and, and teach critical thinking about um, technologies, but also learn a lot from the communities who we are part of and who we seek to engage with as thoroughly uh, as we can. And we use these methods at the intersection of art and creativity and computing, uh, which is a really open space to approach these very big problems in a holistic way. Um, but we don't only do research uh, and, and knowledge exchange, we also have an educational program which covers undergrad, postgrad and PhD education. Actually, before undergrad, we also do foundation courses. Um, and all of this takes part of the world-renowned University of the Arts London, but we are not part of the colleges. We are an independent and sovereign institute, which means that um, within CCI, we have actually a lot of power to make changes. If our students want a, a change, uh, they can often be implemented uh, within a very short time. We're talking days or weeks even, because we are an institute. We are not part of the colleges. We have our own um, resources and spaces. Um, <clears throat> so if you are interested in joining us, let me tell you a bit about the teaching methods that you can expect. Um, they will be profoundly different to your traditional uh, computer science department, um, such as your learning. Uh, your, so your learning <laughs> will include a lot of facilitation-based pedagogy. Um, that means we don't lecture you an awful lot. A lot of the learning will be focused on you and your understanding, the, getting you to think critically uh, about technologies and come up with your own solutions, right? The problems, the issues we tackle are enormous and we need a wide, wide, wide uh, range of people coming up with their own new approaches to um, resolve these global issues. So we are very much uh, using a lot of seminar style teaching methods. We get you to think critically, constructively critically about your colleagues' work and your colleagues will feedback on your work. And over the course of your master's degrees, um, you just really learn these skills to articulate um, critical thinking and constructive critical thinking um, about your own work. But we're also going to look at the work of others, of established artists, of technologists, and uh, this may even include museum visits. As we are based in London, there are many, many fantastic exhibitions. So um, permitting um, that is also part of your education. Uh, there will be lots of class-based workshops where um, our technologists and lecturers help you develop uh, the skills, hand-on skills uh, in class in a formal environment. Your learning will not just be expressed through exams or tests, um, if uh, that at all. The presentations play a big role and discussions, group discussions and group work, where you can just develop your own voice and your own learning in class in a very holistic and natural way. Uh, you can book individual tutorials with us. We're just only two or three clicks away. Um, I am usually uh, available on the same day if you want to speak to me, <laughs> if my students want to uh, get in touch. Um, a large part of your learning is also going to be independent research, where you come up with your own problems, your own solutions, and how you want to tackle them in your own sovereign way. And they will be making sessions where you just learn how to make a certain device, a certain piece of software, or um, approach a problem in your own way uh, and you get to experiment where again the art school model if you want uh, really offers us with a wealth of experience how to assess holistically rather than just exam or essay based um, uh, approaches to learning um, yeah which brings us to the assessment methods so um, they are largely two big approaches to how assessments take place one being summative you know that could be an exam or an essay which at that one moment examines how much do you know about a certain topic and formative assessments are very much taking into account 
how has your learning progressed? And we are less interested in what comes out at the end, but what journey have you taken? How did you get there? What have you tried? What didn't work? Because especially again, as an artist, a designer, you know, the things that don't work uh, are often extremely valuable. And um, the piece of work at the end is just the tip of the iceberg of a large amount of knowledge gained. And uh, as an art school, we are very, very comfortable uh, with giving you credit and, and, and working with that type of learning. Um, critical writing um, is something we teach you. So if you've never written an essay before, that's fine. <laughs> We're here to teach you that. And writing is a really powerful tool to analyze uh, the promises of technology and articulate our own voices. Um, you can build a portfolio as part of your course. Uh, for some of the modules, that's actually part of the form assessments. Um, Presentations are often used in our courses. Um, if you do coding-based lear um, learning, then code reviews could be an assessment method you encounter. Uh, prototyping and making as part of these workshops is um, how we give you a, how we get evidence for your learning. And of course, essays and your final thesis project are just, you know, when I'm marking them, it is astounding to me how much our students have grown and how amazing these thesis projects are. Um, um yeah so that, those are some of our assessment methods again going way beyond what the normal uh, what the average computing department um does um so that was a bit about ccgi overall how learning takes place now comes the part about what is specifically unique or what is the ma msc computing and creative industry and what does it mean to be modular so the modular provision allows us allows you to design your own degree um, to in whatever way um, you, you want to learn. So we have three flagship courses at CCI. Um, and in, if you choose a modular provision, you get to pick units from all three of our taught postgraduate degrees and develop your own portfolio of courses um in a fully flexible way our timetabling team did the impossible so there there are no um unit collisions uh you can pick whatever combination of courses you are interested in um and the other thing that is very special about the modular degree is that there you can study with us in an online uh fashion and at the end of your degree you get award uh, you get an award of an ma or an msc degree depending on which units you choose um so let's go a little bit uh in, in, into a little bit more detail which units can you pick which modules can you pick so our three main master degrees are the create of the the top degrees are the msc in creative computing led by the amazing uh phoenix perry the msc in data science and ai for the creative industries by louise mccallum and the ma in internet equalities by the fantastic peaks craft so these are the three top degrees and if you pick the modular uh, provision you get to pick from all the units that they offer and combine collect your own um create your own um learning portfolio um on the bottom of the slide there is the website cci.arts.ac.uk slash modulator you, um, that is the website where you can see the list of all the courses and at the beginning of the year you can um, pick your modules and it'll tell you how many credits you get <clears throat> um, and um, I'll be advising you what uh, combination may be right uh, for you um, yeah if you uh, we can go quickly through them so there's coding one where you learn the basics of coding creative making uh, teaches you the basics of physical computing uh, STEM for Creatives is a crash course by uh, Luis, where uh, you get introduced to the basics of computing and all the uh, mathematical and computational knowledge you need to um, um, become a sovereign coder. Uh, natural Language Processing for Creative Industries is part of the data science degree, where um, you look at data, uh, natural language processing in particular. Intersectional internets, methods for ethical tech development, feminist coding practices are part of the MA Internet Equalities portfolio, uh, where you'll be looking at uh, power relations and uh, the digital in, in, in 
in various durations. And Critical Studies is the course that I'm teaching with uh, Phoenix Perry, where we look at philosophies and technology through um, a critical studies lens. And we draw on anthropological, philosophical, but also creative practice and how have uh, these literatures informed and make sense of technological developments. Um, for term two, uh, coding two builds on coding one, where you'll be looking at even more advanced frameworks. Uh, creative making um, deepens your skills in creative making. Um, introduction to data science is, I guess, also quite self-explanatory. AI for Media is also part of Luis's um, Data Science and AI uh, Master's program. And Computational Equalities, Design for Responsible and Right and Computation, are part of the MA Internet Equalities portfolio. Um, and they are, I guess, quite self-explanatory self as well. And in term two, uh, the Critical Studies module will continue um, with me. Um, Coming to term three, um, we've uh, got the coding three module, um, where machine intelligence, we could, um, you can be introduced to, to how to um, manipulate machine intelligence, how to use it in your creative practice, uh, data science and in the creative industries. You've got personalization and machine learning and platform potentials and uh, the continuation of human rights and computation from term two. Um, and then after these three terms of taught learning, you will be starting term four, which is very much dedicated to individual study and your dissertation project. Um, as a modular student, you've got the choice between the MA advanced project, which is a 3,500 word report, and the MSc Advanced Project, which is a 7,500 word thesis, uh, and both uh, with a portfolio. Um, so yeah, this just a quick rundown of the different units that you can pick. Um, and I'm gonna to continue to tell you a bit about the role that I play um, in this degree. So as you will be picking courses, from other master degrees, um, but you're gonna do uh, build your own degree in a sovereign way. Uh, it is my role to liaise between you and the course leaders and just make sure that um, you get out of these courses, out of these units, exactly what you want, what you came for. Um, I'll advise you in, to pick, uh, in picking your units. Um, I'll just be your first point of contact if there are any issues, if there's anything you would like to be added or changed. Um, so I facilitate between you and the course leaders because you'll be probably meeting all three of them and all the lectures that they have uh, to enrich their curriculum. And I just make, you sh make sure that um, throughout CCI, you are being catered for in, an, in the best possible way. Um, I am very available. I think <laughs> the students uh, know that I respond to emails almost instantly, um, even on weekends, which is a bad habit. I uh, should put up better boundaries unless uh, I'm I'm very available uh, and yeah I'm really there to support you in your overall learning journey as an additional point of call because you will have your main lecturers who teach you but I'm also there to uh, yeah enable you especially if you are an online learner that means if you pick the online provision of the master's uh, degree um, so who might the MA, MSc, Computing and Creative Industry be right for? Um, I had a little think, and I think somebody who really doesn't know what they want to do could be really well suited to pick the modular degree, and it could be somebody who really wants to study what they are most interested in, what they're passionate about. Um, if you want to develop your own learning, your own portfolio, that the modular uh, provision really is uh, a really great option for you. However, maybe you are somebody who knows exactly what they're passionate about. Maybe you really want to learn about drones. Drones is the most passionate, uh, the thing you're most passionate about. Well, then you can pick whatever it is you want to support you in your journey. And again, I'll be helping you to figure out what uh, companies may be right for you. Um, 
yeah, uh, maybe somebody who's really interested in experimenting with a whole new way of learning, using loads of new media in their practices, uh, or maybe you want to learn about a very wide range of literatures, um, the module preparation could be exactly the right way for you to go. Um, we do not expect you to have any coding skills um, before you uh, start studying with us. I am amazed uh, how Phoenix and Louise are doing it, but every year they take students with no coding, uh, prior coding skills, all the way to make amazing digital artwork, make video games, make virtual reality scenarios, make interactive robots. Um, that we have a lot of experience in making that happen, and I'm just amazed in how short of a time we achieve um, some amazing results. Um, the term one is over now, and I'm getting to see some of the artworks our students uh, produce. I get to read some of the writing, and the learning journey they've been on is grandiose. Um, I'm very proud. <laughs> um, yes, so pretty much any background um, could, uh, is eligible to, to join us on a module degree. As I said, we need a really, really, really wide range of people with a really, really, really wide range of backgrounds and talents to tackle computational problems in a holistic way. So that is very much reflected in who we want to get onto our course to get a wide range of uh, opinions and to also challenge us to cater for as many different needs and voices as we can get. Um, you are very much in, our, in, your own, in charge of your own learning journey and on your own path of discovery through the world of creative computing. Um, so what could be the jobs that uh, you, you get after um, graduating from the MA, MSc Computing and Creative Industry? Um, again, extremely wide uh, and as you are in charge really of what you learn, um, this will be highly individualized. But in our experience, uh, our students tend to go into the arts or into policy uh, or governments that could be think tanks. Um, they uh, are often attracted to design innovation and tech for good type businesses. Uh, they may find themselves in the R&D departments of um, software companies, design houses from small independent ones all the way to the really large global players. Um, maybe journalism or third sector activities are what you could be interested in. Um, charities or NGOs, think tanks, consultancy could be attractive, or you could be a freelance independent artist. Um, uh, and uh, some of our students go into big tech and I'm really happy when it happens because I have a lot of trust that the people who graduate from CCI help us make big tech better because I think it is very much needed. Um, so if this is something that interests you, um, how do you apply? Um, on the URL website, you can look for the MA, MSc Computing and Creative Industry website. Um, so in the top uh, there's the courses um, button and you look for our course on cci.arts.ac.uk and if you scroll down you find <coughs> the um, join us button or I can't read it from here uh, where you uh, can apply for the online or on-site learning. Yes, uh, as it, our course is offered on site in London in the CCI building, which you've seen earlier, but there's also a full online provision. Um, we've got two application deadlines, one being the 12th of January 2020, uh, which is super soon, and the 13th of April 2020. Um, and as the type of students we try to attract is extremely broad, we have simplified our application process at the heart being your CV and your personal statement. Um, and other than that, it really depends on how you want to show us that you are passionate about learning about computational problems in a creative way at an art school. And you show that through your personal statement. Um, so if you have any questions, I know I've thrown a lot of information at you. Uh, please do not hesitate to email us. The address is cci.com 
www.arts.ac.uk and if you've got a question specifically for me just uh, mention my name hunter in the email and it'll get to me and i'll get to you, get back to you uh, as soon as i can otherwise please follow our social media um on twitter on, we're on twitter we're on youtube we're on instagram uh ual underscore cci for twitter ual cci one word for youtube and ual underscore cci for instagram um otherwise please uh give us your question in the chat uh we are here till 3 p.m um that was my presentation Hello, Hanta. Thank you so much for this lovely, super insightful <laughs> presentation. I completely loved it. Thank you. Beautiful. So now I think it's time for us to welcome Yifan and Jasper to this online space and we can start having a conversation for the next 20 minutes. Hello. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Lovely. So we received a lot of questions from all of you who are here today that we'll try and cover. And there's so many questions coming through as well from the chat. So we'll do our best at uh, making sure that everyone gets some clarity on everything they came here for. <laughs> so let's start this. Let's start with the first question. So we've got this one over here. How will building my own curriculum benefit me? And I believe that the students would be best suited to answer this one. Um, so for me, I come from a background in digital humanities and computational social sciences. So this soft structure cur curriculum helps me to advance my like cross-disciplinary research abilities to conduct my own research in artificial intelligence uh, and ethics and governance. Thank you, Fan. That's amazing. Is there anything you would like to add there, Jasper, as well? <laughs> And for me, I feel it's more uh, flexible in choosing a specific field of, of my study. I mean, especially in uh, CC, I really have a cross-disciplinary context. So I really hope to focus my study on uh, AI and machine learning and creative coding, which are actually covered in uh, two courses, uh, CC, creative computing and the data science courses. So when the modular program comes out, I feel it's really fitting my situation where I want to combine these two courses together. And that's why, uh, how I feel is benefit for me. Amazing. Thank you, Jasper, for sharing. Lovely. So we've got this one that we received as well through the form. I'm interested in cybersecurity, data science, and industry games tech. Can other relevant modules be added from areas like psychology, philosophy, or education? I think I'll take this one. Um, so UAL doesn't have a psychology department. We're an art and design uni uh, above anything else. But the creative studies unit that I'm teaching very much includes a lot of philosophy, sociology, anthropology, and aspects from psychology, neurology, neuroscience uh, in that. So you will definitely be um, encountering that. One of our units actually is dedicated to the industrial military complex and its relationship to the game industry. Um, think about the, uh, how drones are being manipulated and um, games as a means for the military industrial complex to recruit uh, young uh, people. Um, so yeah, definitely we will talk about these things uh, and it'll be covered as part of your learning portfolio um, within CCI. Thank you, Hanta. On to the next one. What background do you need to be ready for this course? What is the prerequisite to apply for this course? Passion. We want Passion. a wide yes. range of people with a wide range of skills. So whatever you're great at, whatever you think is needed for um, to shape the computational uh, future that you want to see, please tell us about that. Um, and we will, we'll, I'm sure we, we need you in our classes and in the coding houses of the future and design studios of the future. Love it. Thank you, Hanta. 
Okay, we received a lot of questions about the technical requirements to apply and whether they need a portfolio as well. Again, that will be catered to what type of students um, come to us. Um, the process is, as it's simplified, and you are not expected to have any coding skills. If you want to learn a lot of coding, um, be prepared that it's a very steep learning curve. But for years and years and years, we've done it. <laughs> Everybody has uh, has has um, learned what they need to learn. Uh, maybe our students want to tell us a bit more uh, about that. Oh, I feel just like a hunter cover, like you don't have to, you don't have to know like coding skills because um, all the teachers are going to teach the coding knowledge from, you know, up initial level and uh, you will like naturally develop your coding skills and build up your own portfolio based on uh, unique requirements and also uh, your own research interest. Yes, Thank it's you. really not. It's really not the most important thing uh, of whether you have that coding background. Is you will find different resources that fits to your situation. That's pretty good. That's amazing. Could, Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Hansa. It could be strategic to you know familiarize yourself with the base basics of coding if you feel that um, that is what you want to go for. Um, but it's not a requirement. We have tutors there. It'll be covered in the lectures. But however, you know, you're more than encouraged to look at, you know, the resources we provide on Future Learn. We've got courses on there. Uh, we have uh, on YouTube a lot of tutorials there and just familiarize yourself with um, creative computing and see what you want to do and get out of the course that you shape um, on this provision. Lovely. Thank you, everyone. The next one is about what technical coding skills and software should I expect to learn at the course? Um, so for me, my main focus from this module program will be on uh, internet equalities and uh, data science and artificial intelligence. So for internet equalities, the teacher is going to give you an introductory to intermediate level of JavaScript knowledge, while data science more focused on like Python for data processing and um, machine learning, also big data science analysis. Uh, regarding the software, um, the data science team help you familiarize with uh, Anaconda. And um, for internet equalities, uh, you can just choose uh, your preferred text editors to develop your own coding code. Thank you, Ifan. Anything else you would like to add there, Hunter or Jasper? No? Good to go. OK. We've got another one that says, what kind of work will the course facilitate me to produce? Who would like to go with this one? I think it's, it's up to the unit you have chosen. But the idea is there is no fixed topic or uh, form of the project. So we are pretty much free to do uh, any kind of work as long as it is related to the course content. Um, like for example, in term one, I, where I had the creative co creative making course that I have made a sound installation, uh, which is pretty much a like a communication based, uh, communication design based project. And at the meantime, I have my classmate doing maybe a product design based project. And uh, in another unit where I was doing a more research based project on natural language processing is a lot of coding and uh, theoretical studies. So uh, the idea is uh, there's no fixed form or uh, type of work uh, where just feel free to use any technology that you learn from the courses. Thank you so much, Jasper. Lovely. So moving on, we've got another one, very interesting one that says, would it be possible to see a few examples of outputs of this course from current students? So we do have a few 
resources we would like to share with you. And these are the online graduate shows that we did last year for the MSc in Creative Computing. It's all on YouTube and it's all on the UAL graduate website, which you can browse as well and just check the sort of projects and work that has been developed by CCI students. And just yes, was it yesterday or was it on Wednesday? Wednesday, we did the first in-person exhibition featuring the work by MSc Creative Computing students this year. So the media from that will also be published in the next few weeks. So keep an eye on that because there's some really exciting and interesting projects that the students have developed. Is there anything else you would like to add there? Maybe Hanta? No, I wish you could go to the exhibit. It's beautiful, the, the work they've made. It's so exciting. Um, yeah, very, very proud of what they produced. Amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry about that. I was muted. <laughs> okay, so this next one is about the um, modular studies being online or physical or hybrid. I think we've already touched on, upon that. Um, basically, it's going to be the option of choosing fully online or fully physical in London. There is no um, hybrid in the foreseeable future. And I know that someone else from the audience asked about that. So hopefully this, this already answers the question. Lovely. Okay, moving on. What's the size of the course and classes? Do you want to maybe like talk about your experience, Ifan and Jasper? Oh, uh, sorry, I go ahead. Uh, so I took several internet ecology courses, uh, which is very small. Um, there are four of us for uh, each module, so it's very unique, and um, they ha we have like uh, a big like teaching team. So I feel it's very interactive. So you have a lot of chance to share your own opinions. Also, you know, exchange your ideas with your peers. It's amazing. I was involved in two courses in the data science and AI. We have around 10 to 12 students uh, which in like a similar environment. And in the creative computing, we have uh, around 40 students this year doing on-site study and there are still few uh, students doing online so uh yeah it depends on the courses thank you both lovely these are the next question that we have how many hours per week should a student commit to the course so that is pretty regulated a master's degree uh, of 180 credits uh, should equate to 1800 hours of study um, if you assume 35 to 40 hours of study uh, per week uh, like a full-time job then uh, it is a 52 week um, full-time equivalent of study um, but that includes the lecture time that includes um, your dissertation research time etc and uh, it, it includes also time to think time to work with your colleagues time to have discussions so you'll not be full-time sitting there listening to lectures and then working work, working um you know we are an art school we help you to think critically and creatively um that is the remit uh, and that's how uh, i think you should think about the study, work time study time Thank you, Hunter. And along those lines, we have a question that says, is parenting or working possible during your studies? Um, of course, that depends highly on your um, uh, circumstances. But we have students with uh, dependents, uh, either children or caring responsibilities. Um, and we want to be inclusive um, at UAL and CCI. And um, maybe the online provision could be particularly interested to you, interesting to you. Um, so that could be something we should discuss uh, by email. But yeah, we have students with uh, children who attend uh, successfully our courses. Um, I, maybe a one-to-one -one conversation could be uh, advisable, 
but yes, it's being done. Same thing goes for jobs. Um, as I said, the idea is that this is a full-time equivalent, equivalent of engagement, but uh, very often I find that students who have a freelance work as part of the studies, they can really inform each other and bounce of each other and help actually um, channel the students' learning as well as contribute to the work they put out. Um, again, depending highly on the individual circumstances um, of the learner. Thank you, Hunter. I've got another one for you here. It says, how long can you take to complete this program? Um, so I believe the course is one year full-time taught with three additional months to finish and conclude your dissertation. So 15 months is the total time for this course. Uh, Amazing. Thank you. All right. This one is for Jasper and Yifan. It would be amazing um, to hear from your own experience, um, how you've been using and how helpful you found also the resources, like the teaching technical resources that are available to CCI. Maybe what, just hearing from you, what have been more helpful for you in your journey so far? Mm, so for me, for me I, I don't have, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so for me, I don't have very uh, strong coding background. So the technical team is really helpful, especially uh, when I was like uh, posting questions on Slack, they just give uh, like timely reply, very responsive. And also uh, the, the tutors, they give you like uh, individual tutorial slot, like available availability to let you to do the uh, tutorial session with them. And um, also I feel, um, uh, the library is pretty helpful in general because they, they let's say they can let me a laptop and other resources like physical equipments that I need uh, to do my study here. Yes, and we'll have our own com uh, communication channel on Slack where we could basically uh, connect to any members in CCI. Uh, and also we, ha we, we have events where uh, we invite people to share their work, and uh, I have attended a few talks from our PhD, from our research students, and uh, other artists, which is really cool to look at their work and uh, share some thoughts with them. And also uh, for uh, lab resources, we have our uh, computer lab where there are better desktop, desktop device uh, for us to do like machine learning and rendering work. It's really helpful. Thank you both, really appreciate it. Amazing. We've got this one as well that asks us about the difference between the two MSCs that we have, the model of provision, which we're talking about today, and the MRES, which is the Masters of Research. Would you like to take on that one, Hunter? Sure. Um, if you're interested in the module degree, please also look at the other degrees from which you will be sourcing your um, modules from, your units from. Um, the Creative Computing um, MSc is the probably the most universal degree we've got, which includes computational training as well as the critical thinking. Um, and at the other side, we've got maybe the uh, DSAI course, the uh, Data Science and Artificial Intelligence one, which very much is coding heavy, helps you to use um, uh, artificial intelligence in your creative work. Um, and then at the other side, we've got the MA Internet Equalities, which is probably less coding heavy, but thoroughly engages you with the critical thinking skills and equips you with an idea to dissect and critique and reimagine new technologies. Um, but um, of course, this just an oversimplified um, uh, mapping. Um, so, but that's how they feed into each other, support each other, and the modular provision enables you to pick and mix however you see fit um, in conversation with the different course leaders who will advise you what uh, prior knowledge you need to pick the certain units in case you haven't picked. Um, so advanced coding is advisable only if you either have already certain coding skills or took um, introduction to coding in the previous term. 
uh, but this is a conversation that I'm there to facilitate and we'll have it with the course leaders uh, who will do their best to, to enable you in your learning journey in the best possible way. Thank you, Hunter. Lovely. We're going to go through this question now, which says, do you know what specific skill set and knowledge the industry are asking for and where to apply them successfully to secure employment? Um, our lecturers and uh, technologists are industry leaders in their own right, uh, with years and years of experience, and they um, often still continue to work and freelance on the side whilst working at CCI. So they be really able to help you uh, and speak from first um, person experience, um, because we are still part of the industry. My own background is mainly research focused, but my uh, colleagues who are still practicing artists or uh, consultants for um, uh, large sector companies, uh, yeah, they'll look after you in that way and answer your queries or help you develop your own uh, career goals in that matter. That's great. Thank you, Hunter. Well, we made it to 3 p.m. Um, so I'm just wondering whether maybe we should just go for one last question and just invite everyone who's here and share more questions on the chat that were not covered to please email us at cci at arts.ac.uk. We'll do our best to get back to you. So now to just finish on a positive and beautiful note, I would like to ask you, what does CCI community like from your own lived experience? Uh, okay, I have to be honest, like this school is the most diverse, inclusive institution for me, like in the last, like it, during this like years, higher education, uh, living in UK and uh, Holland. Uh, I feel the team is very international. We have students coming from different backgrounds, fine arts, technology, or even business administration. And they are very hardworking and very helpful and generous help each other out on assignments or uh, give um ideas and you know like to inspire you for your own research and also the teachers are very helpful that they're, they're just like listen to you all the time and taking care of you so i really appreciate this chance starting here It is Thank a really, you. it is a really open and friendly environment where, uh, on I mean on Slack, I just spend so much time scrolling through the work that they we, uh, uh, our classmates share, and uh, it's a really open community. Thanks so much for sharing. Would you like to add something there, Hunter? Um. I think maybe if you share the link to the modulator that students who are interested can maybe have a play with them. And if you know, this degree interests you, also check out the other degrees we offer. Um, you will find plenty of information and other um, open day videos that are on YouTube and there are going to be more open days coming up. Um, I think it's a really, really amazing space. Um, colorful and diverse in the best of ways. We're very ambitious. Uh, and we've got a right to be proud of the track record that we've got so far. Um, it's an exciting space to join, and I'd be looking forward to having you on this or any of our CCI degrees. Thank you, Hunter. Thank you, Yifan, and thank you, Jasper, for being here today and sharing your, your experience with everyone um, joining us through YouTube. Again, um, we couldn't cover all the content that we aimed at, um, but our inbox is always open for, for you to get in touch and hopefully we can get back to you as soon as possible and just um, answer to all the questions that you've been sharing. In the meantime, um, again, this video will be shared on YouTube. So if you want to go through the content again, the presentation that Hansa gave, or just to hear again from Jasper and Yifan's experience, you'll, you'll have the chance to do it. You'll receive the link to the, to the recording in, in a few weeks' time. So that's everything. I hope you got excited about joining this module of provision and CCI overall. Feel free to reach out if there's anything else. And we look forward to meeting you in real life, hopefully very soon. Thanks everyone for joining us. 
Have a lovely evening. Thank you. <laughs>